For I am crucified with Christ And yet I live Embrace the cross Welcome to Crossbound Ministries, where we are bringing the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world, encouraging Christians and pointing sinners to the cross. Will you please pray about supporting our broadcast and ministry that gives us the ability to spread God's word? You can get involved by going to crossboundministry.com. Please welcome our preacher, Mike Sadler, as he brings us an important message from God's word. Amen. Praise the Lord. John chapter 19 is where we'll be today. John chapter 19, and this is where Jesus goes before Pilate, where the religious leaders take Jesus before Pilate to be crucified. So in John chapter 19, verse number 1, the Bible says, Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. Just that word scourged him sound bad, doesn't it? It certainly is. They took the cat of nine tails and, and beat him with it. And uh, just that sounds horrible. They scourged him. Verse 2, And the soldiers platted a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put on him a purple robe and said, Hail, King of the Jews! And they smote him with their hands. They, they mocked him. They made fun of him. They hurt him physically. See, they would play a game back then. They would put a bag on their head. They would show him their fist, and then they would, they would slug them. They would punch them. Then they'd take the, the hood off and show them their hand and say, well, now, which one of us hit you? Because, see, that person had been sentenced to death, and so the soldiers could just have their way with him. Whatever they decided they wanted to do, they would just take it out on him. Verse number four. Pilate, therefore, went forth again and saith unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that ye may know that I find no fault in him. Pay close attention to what Pilate says here. He says that you may know I find no fault in him. It was like at least seven times that Pilate said, I find no fault in him. Pilate did not want to put this man to death. Pilate did not want to put Jesus to death. And so Pilate here was hoping that they would be happy with what he did. He had Jesus beaten. He was scourged. They put a crown of thorns upon his head. But they weren't happy with that. No, they wanted Jesus crucified. Verse 5, Then came Jesus forth wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate saith unto them, Behold the man, when the chief priests therefore and officers say, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. Again, Pilate does what not want nothing to do with this man. A judge that does not want to make a bad judgment, in other words. And I believe Pilate knew, he knew that there was something different about this man, that God had his hand upon this man. Because listen to verse number eight. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, because see what, what the saying that he heard was, the religious leader says, if you don't put him to death, you're not a friend of Pilate, you're not this, you're not that. But listen to what he says. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was more afraid. Listen to me. This man had no reason to fear man. This man's word was law in the land. If he said you'd be put to death, that meant you'd be put to death. Why in the world would he be fearful of a man that they wanted to kill unless he knew there was something greatly different about this man because the Bible clearly says when Pilate heard that he was afraid he was scared he was shaking in his boots he didn't want nothing to do with having Jesus crucified he did not want to take Jesus's life and so he took Jesus into the to the judgment hall and listen to what Pilate says in verse 10 then said Pilate unto him speakest thou not unto me knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee and power to release thee Jesus answered, Thou couldst have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore, he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. 
Jesus said, Pilate was saying, don't you know that I have power to let you go or, or power to take your life? And Jesus let him know that you have no power over me. The only power that you have over me is because God is allowing it to happen. Remember what the Bible says that Jesus willfully laid down his life. No man take it from him, but he willfully laid it down. And listen to what he says about the greater sin. The man that delivered me unto you hath the greater sin. Have you ever wondered, is there one sin greater than the other? Absolutely. According to this verse, there is. He says, hath the greater sin sin so there is some sins worse than others and that's where i i'm going off on rabbit trail here but i wonder if there's different levels of hell and if a judge is fair and just and he has to judge the crime by what happened then i believe that there is different levels to hell because if there is a greater sin it would deserve a greater punishment would it not and it would not be a fair and just judge if he did not judge rightfully and that's what jesus says here this man hath the greater sin now listen to verse 12 listen to what pilate wants to do and from thenceforth pilate sought to release him but the jews cried out saying if thou let this man go thou art not caesar's friend whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. Now listen, these Jews, these religious leaders hated Pilate. They didn't want anything to do with Pilate. They wanted out from under his rule. And so they were only using this as a ploy to scare Pilate so that he would put Jesus to death. Because Caesar in the land, he required that you fully and completely submit to him and his rule and so they were trying to scare Pilate into killing Jesus into crucifying him and verse 13 when Pilate therefore heard that saying he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement but in the Hebrew Gabbatha and it was the preparation of the Passover and about the sixth hour and he saith unto the Jews behold your king this is what Pilate says to him. Now listen, they're trying to get him put to death. And Pilate says, behold your king. Pilate knew there was something different about Jesus. But verse 15 says, but they cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, we have no king but Caesar. I love what Pilate's doing here. He's showing them, hey, you guys are wrong. You are dead wrong. He is the king of the Jews. And what do you want me to do? You want me to crucify your own king? Of course they did. They didn't want Jesus taking the power away from them. They wanted the people to have to come to them to get to God. But you don't have to go to another man to get to God. You have to go to Jesus to get to God. The Bible says Jesus is our intercessor between us and and God. Jesus makes the way to God. Amen. How do you get there? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. You remember what Pilate asked him? What is truth? If he only fully and completely realized that he was speaking to the truth, a man named Jesus. Verse 16, then delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. And he bearing his cross went forth into a place called the place of the skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha. Death, in other words. You know, like the Gothic look that used to be popular? Goth, it means death. Where they crucified him and two others with him on either side and Jesus in the midst. Now, I love this. I love what Pilate wrote. Listen to this in verse 19. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And the writing was Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Now, this is the man that has the most power in that land. This man called Pilate. And he is writing this saying to go over Jesus' head, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. And it even goes a little further than that. Listen to verse 20. This title then read many of the Jews, for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city, and it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. You see, Pilate wanted to make sure that everybody could read it. 
He wrote that in three different languages. Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews, was hanging over his head. Don't you know that made them Jewish religious leaders angry and mad and they threw a fit? They couldn't stand it. How could you write something? How could you do that? They were so mad. Listen to what they said in verse 21. Then said the chief priest of the Jews to Pilate, write not the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. In other words, don't, don't write that. Don't write that he hears Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. Write that he said he was, but he really is. Amen. And listen to what Pilate said. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. I believe Pilate believed it. Whether or not he believes he was the savior, the Messiah of the world, I'm not sure. Only God knew his heart, but Pilate was definitely afraid to put Jesus to death. Pilate did not want to make that decision. Pilate did not, did not want the blood of Jesus on his hand. And of course, Jesus could see his heart and he let him know, listen to me, the one that delivered you unto me hath the much greater sin. And maybe in some way, Jesus was giving him a little bit of comfort there because these Jewish religious leaders were forcing everything in every way that they could. You see, because in their law, they weren't allowed to put anybody to death. They had to go through a Roman leader and that Roman leader in that land was Pilate. And Pilate was afraid of Jesus. Pilate was afraid to put Jesus to death. Isn't that amazing? A man that has all power is afraid to put this man who's in bondage, who's been beaten. He's afraid and he wants to let him go. Pilate wants to let him go, but these Jewish religious leaders are doing everything that they can to put fear into Pilate because see, Caesar could easily take Pilate's life. He could easily take all his power away from him. Now, I love what Pilate wrote. What I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers when they had crucified Jesus, took his garment and made four parts to every soldier apart and also his coat. Now the coat was without seam woven from the top through the bottom. And just like the Bible says in verse number 24, scripture was fulfilled. Amen. The Old Testament was being fulfilled in the New Testament that his garment was made of one piece and that the soldiers would not tear it or rip it, but no, they would cast lots for who would get it. And so scripture is being fulfilled here isn't that something here's worldly people doing worldly things but yet they're fulfilling scripture now you think about today and i look around at all the things that are going on and you wonder what in the world i can't believe this is happening and that's happening this time and maybe just maybe you never know they might be fulfilling scripture like the bible says make sure that you study that old testament because here they're fulfilling scripture by casting lots for jesus's vesture for his coat in other words listen to verse 25 now there stood by the cross of jesus his mother hey your mother's always there by your side isn't she there's no love like a mother's love and here jesus is he's on the cross and his mother his mother is standing there can you believe that i believe she hurt more than anybody seeing her own son who was completely innocent and she knew that he was innocent die on that cross. Don't you know how deep and how bad that truly hurt her, but yet she was there by his side. She didn't turn away. She didn't run away. She was there with her son. You see, Mary can't do anything for you. Mary herself is in need of a savior, and that is Jesus. And Jesus may have been her son physically, but he was also her savior and save her soul from the fires of hell. So verse 25 says, now there stood by the cross of Jesus, Jesus, his mother, and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple standing by, whom he loved, which is John, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. He is turning his mom over to the disciple to take care of her, to watch over her, to make sure she has what she needs. Don't let her go hungry. Don't let her go homeless. I want you to watch over her. And listen to verse 27. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour that disciple took her his own house. 
He adopted her and she adopted him. According to what Jesus said, this was Jesus' desire. So you wonder, does Jesus want you to take care of one another? Absolutely. He told his own mother, behold thy son. And he told that disciple, behold thy mother. In other words, you love them and you take care of them like they are your very own flesh. And that pleases the Lord. That pleases Jesus when that happens. Listen to verse 28. After this, Jesus knowing all things were now accomplished that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Isn't that, think about that statement he's saying. After this, Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished. All things were. All the work that needed to be done to redeem a man or redeem a woman from the penalty of sin, from the fires of hell, has been finished, has been complete. Jesus has done all he can to save you. But listen, you can reject that gift. You can turn away from that gift. You don't have to have nothing to do with that gift. Jesus gives you freedom because true love, true love has freedom, freedom to choose. And Jesus made the way. He paid the sacrifices. And listen, he wants you to put your faith and trust in him. But there's something, something that is so sacred, God himself will not touch it. And that is your free will. God gives you a free will and he wants you to choose him. He wants you to choose his son. He wants you to choose salvation. Amen. That's what he wants. And listen, he says, knowing that all things were now accomplished. Jesus' spiritual thirst, Jesus had a spiritual thirst. He wanted to make sure that the work was done so that me and you could be saved, so that the penalty of sin could be taken care of, that we could be washed in the blood, that we could have a ticket to heaven, amen, to be in the presence of a thrice holy God. Jesus said all those things are done. Won't you believe it? Won't you put your faith and trust in it? And so listen, Jesus' spiritual thirst was much greater than his physical thirst. Because notice, Jesus didn't ask for something to drink until everything was completed. Listen, nothing is out of order in the Bible. He said, knowing that all things were now accomplished, as the scripture might be fulfilled, saith I thirst. Do you read your Bible before you feed your belly? Mm, that's convicting, isn't it? Because Jesus put the spiritual first, even on his last breath, on the cross while he was dying, Jesus put the spiritual first. His spiritual thirst was a lot greater than his physical thirst. Can I ask you, is your spiritual hunger much greater than your physical hunger? Is your spiritual thirst much greater than your physical thirst? Amen. Which one do you please first? Because according to Jesus, what Jesus says and what he does, it's the spiritual that should be first. That is a great example for me and you to follow. Amen. Now, there was a set vessel full of vinegar and they filled a sponge with vinegar and put it upon the hyssop, which is a sponge and put it to his mouth. They had a pole with some, with a sponge on the end of it and they dipped it in vinegar. Ooh, now that's just think about that. You ever had a shot of vinegar? You ever had just a little bit or you ever eat something that's got too much vinegar in it? I mean, it will just make your whole face draw up and you imagine being dying of thirst, literally dying of thirst on the cross. And they put to your mouth a sponge full of vinegar. How foul that must have been. How much that must have, must have just hurt to taste that. And verse 30 says, When therefore Jesus had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Now, wait a minute. He's dying on the cross, and he says, it is finished. Yes, there is nothing that you can add to salvation. There's not works. There's not money. There's not nothing that you can add to the finished work on the cross that Jesus Christ did. Because right there, he says, it is finished. You can't work for it. You can't earn it. You can't buy it. It can only be freely given from Jesus, and he wants to give it to you. Will you accept it? today will you accept the finished work that jesus did on that cross amen because he wants you to accept it so bad that he died for you to accept it verse 31 
The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was was and a high day besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. If you remember, there was two thieves on the cross, one on each side of Jesus that were not dead yet. And they went and asked Pilate, hey, can we break their legs so they'll die? So we can go ahead and take them down off the cross and get this over with. Listen to verse number 32. Then came the soldiers and break the legs of the first and of the other which was crucified with him. 33. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs. They came to Jesus. They said, he's already dead. There's no life left in him. He's already given up the ghost. But listen to verse 34, what happens? If you think about that, he's already dead. Verse 34 is kind of peculiar. But one of the soldiers with the spear pierced his side and forthwith came there out blood and water now hold on they just said jesus is already dead why'd he stab him why bother why waste your energy to stab the man if he's already dead i believe it was out of hatred out of hatred for god himself you see when somebody hates you as a christian it's really not you that they hate their real problem is is with God. They hate God. They hate that he's holy and they really hate that they are not good enough to get into heaven. That I can't do it myself. I can't be good enough. It's not you that they hate. And so this soldier may have had some hatred toward God in him and he was taking it out. I'm going to stab him. See? And so blood and water came out. Blood, The blood of Jesus cleansed from sin. I believe that's what that signifies. The blood cleanses from sin. And the water, I believe the water signifies the cleansing from sin by the washing of the water of the word. Amen. The more that you read God's word, the more that it will cleanse your heart. The more you'll want to get sin out of your life. The more that you want to live a holier life. Amen. The more that you have God's word in you. Verse 35 says, And he that saw it bear record, and his record is true. And he knoweth that he saith truth, that ye might believe. For these things were done, that the scripture should be fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken. As many things that happened to Jesus, he was beaten and scourged and nailed to the cross. Amen. Not even a, his little pinky finger got a broken bone. Why? Because the scripture the Bible was being fulfilled. Amen. Isn't that an amazing fact? Not even his little finger had a broken bone in it. Why? Because the Bible said it would not. Amen. Verse 37. And again, another scripture saith, they shall look on him whom they have pierced. Now listen to this. And after this, Joseph of Armethia, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him leave. He came, therefore, and took the body of Jesus. The Bible says this man named Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but he was a secret disciple because he was afraid of the Jews. Many Christians today are kind of in the closet Christians. They don't, they're not real bold. They don't go out and witness. They don't say much. Why? Because they're scared of man. And I'm not condemning you or beating you down, but I do want to try to help you to get over that fear of man. Amen. The Bible says the fear of a man is a snare. Listen, people are not going to like you anyways. So you might as well tell them about Jesus so they'll know the way to heaven. But more so than that, it's because the Bible commands you to. So this man came and, and, and watched over him and buried him and put him in a tomb where no man had ever been laid. I ask you today, have you ever put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ? That the finished work on the cross, because it says there in verse 30, it is finished. Amen. We pray you have been blessed by today's message. If you have been saved or are in need of a prayer, please contact us at 352 247 9200. That's 352 247 9200. 
Thank you for tuning in to Crossbound Ministries radio broadcast. Will you please pray about supporting our ministry and broadcast? You can go to crossboundministry.com or send your support or a gift to P.O. Box 7, Inverness, Florida, 34451. That's P.O. Box 7, Inverness, Florida, 34451. For a gift of $10 or more, we will send you a booklet. Please pray for us as our ministry and radio broadcast grows. Tune in every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. to hear a message from our preacher, Mike Sadler. You can follow Crossbound Ministry on Facebook, YouTube, and visit us on the web at crossboundministry.com. If you are a pregnant woman in need of help, there is hope. You can reach out to the Citrus Pregnancy Center. There are locations in Inverness and in Crystal River. Their phone number is 352-341-5176. That's 352-341-5176. This broadcast has been sponsored in part by Henley's Grading Incorporated for all your land clearing and hauling needs. Located in Hernando, Florida, 352-897-3507. That's 352-897-3507. This program is sponsored by Crossbound Ministry of Inverness, Florida.